everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Tuesday morning at 11.43. It is time for our daily devotion. So I am jumping online for our Facebook Live event, hoping that some of you will come and join me. As you do and as you sign in this morning, I would invite you to take an opportunity to leave a comment and let me know who all is here. would love a chance to say good morning to you. And then here in a couple minutes, we will get started with our devotion. A couple of folks have joined us. We had a good crowd yesterday. Good morning, Stacy. Hi, Cherry. Good morning. What are you doing in Florida? Vacationing, I hope. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Good morning to you. For my St. John's friends, Cherry Walton Humphrey is a friend of mine from my Lee Summit days. So we go back a couple decades. <laughs> Working. Well, that's nice. I hope you're not in the middle of a path for a hurricane. Just going to wait a little bit longer and see if anybody else leaves a comment and says good morning. For those of you who are already here, if you want to find your Bibles and turn to Philippians chapter 2, that would be great. Hi, Susan. Good morning to you. Welcome home from Texas. What part of Texas were you in, by the way? Christine Copeland's been down, I think, uh, Galveston area, if I remember correctly, or Padre. Corpus, Corpus Christi. I think that's actually where she has a vacation home. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Good morning to you. Again, for those of you who are here, we're going to read out of Philippians chapter 2. We're going to read verses 3 to 11. This is called the Philippians hymn. Let's go ahead and let's get started. I'm sure we'll have some folks that will join us kind of midstream, but let's go, let's go ahead and get started. So Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 through 11 says... Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility, think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, he did not consider being equal with God something to exploit. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and by becoming like human beings. When he found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God highly honored Jesus and gave him a name above all names, so that the name of Jesus everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth might bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So our devotion writer is John D. Bowen from Minnesota. His focus verse is Proverbs chapter 21, verse 4, that says, Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the unplowed field of the wicked, produce sin. And here is what he offers for us today. 
One of my joys in retirement has been finding more time to read the Bible. I've been amazed by how many verses and stories pertain to humility. They have prompted me to reflect on how often my ego comes into play and manifests itself in negative ways. Pride has plagued humanity since the beginning, and our culture constantly bombards us with messages that speak to gratifying our desires through possessions, appearance, or status. What a contrast it is to reflect on the life of our Lord and Savior. Though his coming was heralded for centuries, Jesus' arrival was humble, in a stable and surrounded by animals. Everything Jesus did during his time on earth reflected humility, including his choice of disciples and people he associated with. His humility continued to the very end of his life on earth when he submitted to the will of God, was arrested and tried as a criminal, and suffered torture and death on a cross. Jesus' humble life provides a model for us to follow. Christ the King came not to be served, but to serve. We can embrace that attitude and strive to do the same. So the thought for the day is, I will look for opportunities to follow the example of Jesus. Boy, how do you, if ever there was a time where this might speak to many of us, you know, when you, when you watch things on uh, social media like Twitter or when you watch uh, Facebook or, or any others, Instagram, TikTok, all those kinds of things, or, or simply just maybe watch some media personalities on, on the news or on your shows. It, we live in a culture of self-aggrandizement, right? Everybody is trying to figure out how to promote themselves in some way. Listen to personalities who talk about what it means to monetize their social media sites. Uh, there are people who make, you know, thousands, if not millions of dollars monetizing their sites on things like YouTube and Facebook and places like that. Monetize means they take advertising dollars and, and make money in things. My uh, One of my grandsons, you know, we asked him years ago, DJ, what he wanted to be when he grows up. Now, he's 11 at the moment. But um, we asked him what he wanted to be when he, grow, when he grew up, and he said he wanted to be a hacker, which meant he wanted to be a game hacker because game hackers show their, their skills on YouTube and they monetize their sites, and that's how they make money, right? So, you know, all of this is about self-promotion, and that's the culture in which we live. People do a lot of self-promotion, right? They promote products. They promote a style, look, all these kinds of different things. We try to emulate a lot of it in the personalities that we follow, in our mannerisms, in our style, in our own dress, and, and what we think is, is socially acceptable and what's not socially acceptable. If you think about the life of Jesus, I mean, that his life and his example certainly flips upside down the idea of what it means to promote yourself. Jesus, Jesus in, in his final meal, if you read John, John doesn't have Jesus sharing the communion, communion elements with his disciples. John has Jesus taking a towel, bending down, and washing the feet of his disciples. Right? There's a humility in his life that is, tra you know, it's, it's transparent humility. It's something that's on display. You can see it. There's nothing false or fake about it whatsoever. It was the model of his life. It was not a life that was, was about promoting himself. Even when Peter made the confession that Jesus was the Messiah, the king, Jesus told him, don't tell anybody, right? He didn't, he didn't want that kind of notoriety. It's apparent that that's the way the Gospels portray him. So when you think about the contrast between the two things, you know, the modern day life today and, and the call to promote self versus the envisionment of Jesus who says that we are to be humble and that we should live humbly. I mean, what, what is the struggle that you find yourself in today? Do you find yourself struggling with a little bit of that and 
and how you try to figure out how to be more humble and through that humility find ways in which you can serve others. I think that is maybe the key to to service for many of us, particularly when it comes to serving those who are uh, less fortunate and under-resourced. It takes a certain level of humility to be able to do that. And so take a moment, if you would, please, to pause and pray with me. So, dear Lord, when our pride and ego rise up, we ask that you help us to remember to model our lives after the humble example of Christ. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate everybody being here for our time of devotion. Uh, I'm going to take an opportunity, you know, as we close this, to post this on my own Facebook page, and I'd invite you to do the same. But otherwise, I appreciate everybody being here today. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Margaret's over my shoulder. Everybody wave. Uh, but enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and we'll talk to you soon. Hi. <laughs>